computer. So everyone, thank you so much for coming to this webinar today about the Startup Visa program. And today we have a very uh, different webinar as normal. Uh, my name is Miriam Lazarte. I'm the CEO of Latam Startups. And instead of me talking about the Startup Visa program and how we work, uh, you know, the Startup Visa program today, we have uh, invited uh, three companies that are already in the program and that, uh, you know, they, um, they have been in a long journey uh, in their entrepreneurial lives in their own countries and uh, trying to enter to this country, trying to enter to North America and trying to also take advantage of the Startup Visa program in the best way possible. Um, so, because we receive too many questions all the time, uh, you know, about the Startup Visa and how it works and all these kind of things, uh, I think it will be very nice uh, of all of you to have this conversation with our uh, three companies, uh, the co-founders that are representing these companies. Now, I will ask you to please, as a, any other Zoom calls, just uh, keep your microphones uh, muted uh, while, you know, the co-founders are speaking. But uh, I will introduce each of them. Uh, I will let them, uh, you know, basically introduce themselves. And then we will start with questions. So uh, first of all, Rodrigo from Rank My App. Rodrigo, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, I'm Rodrigo from Brazil. Uh, Rank My App basically help apps improve their communication and gain more downloads and engagement. Uh, in Brazil, uh, we have 85% of the market share here, and now we try to expand to Canada. So Latam is is helping us to do that. Thank you, Rodrigo. Uh, so Beatriz uh, from eCreate, and she has a spin-off here in Canada that is called Light Touch. Beatriz, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. Uh, good evening. Um, I'm Beatriz Anatelli, co-founder and CEO of Light Touch. Uh, we are an ed tech company that's uh, also positioned in the creative industries. And what we do is we empower children through social emotional uh, education. And our solution is to help parents uh, to met and educators as well to, to measure and develop emotional intelligence um, in kids. So, Thank you, Beatriz. Uh, now the last company that we have today participating is uh, with two co-founders. Fernando and Juliana from Colombia. They are uh, they have this company called Makers. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself, Fernando and Juliana? Yeah, sure. Hi everyone. Uh, we are Fernando. This is Fernando. I am Juliana from Colombia. As Miriam said, uh, we create an educational robot. We have a Kini, which is a robot, as I told you. We basically teach coding uh, to kids and make it easy for teachers. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, so now that we know, you know, we have two co-founders from Brazil, uh, another two from uh, from Colombia. So the first question that that comes to, uh, you know, to many people is why uh, did you apply for the Startup Visa program? Why is this important for uh, companies that are coming here to Canada? Who would like to start? I can start. Um... Well, first in Canada, if you're a permanent resident, uh, you have a lot of more access to funding and grants. So it's a way of the institutions that uh, provide this type of funding and grant that know and they understand that you intend to stay in the country and you intend to make a life here. So it's, uh, it's opening doors for um, more opportunities in the country also. For us, we believe that um because um, we want to introduce our product to the North American market. Uh, Canada is a very strategic point to start, uh, you know, like pilot uh, programs here. For example, right now we're based on Toronto and it's, it's pretty much, um, you can pivot your product uh, quite fast because as Beatrice mentioned, um, there is a lot of funding as well. And that part of that funding, it's basically to conduct even research or survey. So, that basically helps to test your product before even going to uh, more experiment um, markets like US. Uh, I'm, I've been living in Canada since 2017 and I tried to, I, I was trying to do this by myself. So when I, I first met Miriam and, and, and I see how, how the programs work, I, I, I thought it was really, 
it's easier than I try to do everything by myself. Uh, in 2016, we tried to expand to, to US, for example. It was really hard to a, a Brazilian company to enter in US. So as a Canadian company, it's, it's easier than to a Brazilian company. So that's the reason that we we choose a startup visa and the whole program of Latam. Well, uh, many uh, many people that reach us out think that you know this is just uh, one requirement, one step that that you need to do uh, in order to get your permanent residence. And we know many entrepreneurs are going into that path. But um, you know, we all, we, at least at Lat in Latam startups, we know all your stories, and this is not an easy path for for entrepreneurs. I would like, before I jump into the next question, which is more about the opportunities that, that it may bring, and you guys have kind of described this part, is to tell a little bit of the story uh, of your company, how you initiated, initiated in, in your country, and uh, why it makes sense for you to, to be here in Canada now. Um, it's a program, and uh, oh, Miriam is back. Hi. Yeah, I'm back, sorry about that. <laughs> kind of disconnected for a minute. Uh, but yeah, I was saying that uh, per, perhaps it will be nice uh, to hear the stories of you guys and maybe, uh, you know, get a sense of what is that, uh, why is, you know, why you initiated your company, your country, why is that this move uh, was important for you to come uh, to North America right now? So I'm not sure who wants to start. Oh. Sorry. I can start with that. And as also as Juliana and Fernando was, were mentioning and Rodrigo as well, for our case that we are in ed tech and we are dealing with uh, children from and we intend to go uh, through the whole world to the whole world. So Canada has because of its multicultural background as well. It's a very amazing. We had the uh, opportunity to do boot camp either in New York or in Toronto. And we no doubt about it. It was Toronto because uh, when we launch something here, we have people from all over the world. So if your product is successful here at the eyes of a Canadian, you know, being a Canadian corporation, being a Canadian company, having uh, Canadians as your clients, it's most likely you'll su succeed worldwide because you have a multicultural background here. So it's, I think it's the secret to success and, and Toronto provides that network opportunity that all of that for us. Beatriz, so for how long have you had your company in, in, in Brazil? eCreate is, uh, 16 years already to, uh, this year it completes 16 years and mm -hmm. it, I, it's not uh, mine I started working for them but light touch which is ours the project initiated in 2018 so I met Miriam back in 2018 we've been I've been going back and forth to Toronto ever since and then moved uh, last year with my family but it's it's a process it's not something you do overnight you know it's it's a process and when you're in good hands as we are and you know we were blessed and meeting LATAM startups and having their insights, their um, feedbacks, and their mentorship, that opens many doors. So it's really good. And one more question, Beatriz, about that process. Uh, what did inspire you, uh, you know, to create a light touch as a part of, uh, you know, spin-off from eCreate? What, why did you guys came up with the idea and why you, you well, you kind of uh, mentioned why you bring it here, but you know, what it, why is that that you create the company, uh, you know, as a spin-off here? Well, because you need to have also, um, it's, it's something, if you talk on the, the perspective of fundings and stuff and, and money, you have to be sustainable. You have to have either a company behind you, you have to have enough funds to be able to go through this process because it's not a cheap process. You know, it's not, it's not something you go and you, it's not just to get the the residence. It's not that. So you have to invest in your business, and in, in order for you to invest in your business, you have to have the fundings uh, for it. So that's a very important matter, and it's one of the requirements as well for the the startup visa. You have to show that you're able to sustain yourself. Correct. Correct me if I'm wrong, Miriam. But yeah, that's right. And we actually stress a lot that part in the company. And sometimes you know people are like, well. We are startups and we, we really want to make this move, but uh, you know, people don't realize how expensive is Toronto and Canada and to grow a company. Uh, so thank you so much, Beatriz, for that. But talking about growing companies, uh, Rodrigo, uh, you guys are in different um, you know, investment series right now. 
you also have kind of a story behind, uh, you know, your own company, Rank My Up. Uh, so I would like you to share a little bit of that story and, you know, why, why it makes sense for you to, to come here after, you know, all mm -hmm. have you done in, in, in Brazil? Yes, uh, we found Rank My Up in 2015. Uh, and in Brazil, we have 85% of the market share here. So we have two options or launch a new product or try to expand the company to another, another countries. So uh, I was living in, in, in Canada. So we tried to, to expand in the US as I, I, I was talking about. Uh, so we, tr we are trying to, to expand in Canada. And then in the US, so was the option because our, the market share in Brazil um, finished. So we, we need to, to do other things. <laughs> okay, uh, so you guys have been in Brazil since 2015. And so far, uh, what, is the, um, what is the current uh, revenue of the company uh, for, for this year? Or the projected uh, for revenue? This year will be more or less 40 uh, 40 million reais will be mm -hmm. like, uh, I, I think it's 13 or 13, 13 million dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dollars. Uh, I imagine that, uh, you know, uh, sharing this information with, you know, with the audience uh, is not that you guys raise money from one day to another. No, uh, no. It's, it's, it's a lot, a lot of your name, a lot of changes that you can make yes. in uh, the company, right? We, we start, yes, we start as a bootstrap. And in 2016, when, one year after this, we, we, we raised money in Brazil and in, uh, in US with angels, investors. And then in 2018, we, we did a fundraising with uh, one, one big, uh, with big, fund, with big, big investors in, in US and also in Canada. We did a Series A in that time. And now we are where we are doing the series B now in, in Brazil. Yeah, no, that's that's an amazing, you know, growth for a, for a company. So totally, you know, you can see that companies like uh, you know Beatriz and Rodrigo's uh, companies, they actually, uh, you know, had been raising money, working in, in to get customers, working to get revenue to actually you know, be able to uh, make this move. Uh, but I will continue with Juliana and Fernando and also to tell a little bit of, of your story because you kind of are new in the program. You entered this uh, just recently in September, uh, but you also have your story in Colombia about, you know, building up your company and coming here. So uh, Fernando and Juliana, tell us a little bit of a story of uh, coal makers and why you decide to come to, uh, you know, the country. Yeah, well, for us, it was different about, uh, about uh, as Beatriz was saying and Rodrigo, because they were like coming back uh, to Canada and they're going back to, to Brazil like many times. But we decided to move in, in one way to here to, to Toronto. So, uh, so far we have been living, living here like eight months uh, since, Mar since March of, of this year. So we already have uh, our company uh, five, five, five yeah. years. Yeah, so. five years we launched in Colombia. So we decided we decide to move here because as you three say, uh, well, if you are here, you can provide everything because Toronto is a multicultural uh, city. So you can, uh, find out every every everything you can are looking for. Um, Fernando, I don't hear you well. You are uh, too far away. Complementary <laughs> to what Juliana mentioned, mm -hmm. um, the intention was to go in front of a local market. Uh, we were basically involved to a more global market, and um, since the pandemic, that has been a even more reality because it's now mandat mandatory for us to be truly all online and global. For example, perhaps uh, the fi five years ago, or the last five years, we were trying everything local and you know experimenting in our own market and not really like into online. But since the pandemic, uh, we changed our business model to be totally online and global. And that has opened us many doors. Um, 
as you might know the audience, uh, there are different uh, accelerators that it, the better, the more you are involved in, in many, it's, it's, it might be better. And um, with the help of Latin startups, they also help you to recommend you which one could work better for you because it depends on the industry you are in. Um, so yeah, we get into a, another accelerator as well. So we're like in two programs right now, which is, is really good because you feel like the support of the community. And um, yeah, what else can we disclose? All this is news for you as well, Emilia. This is just recent news, but we apply for the Alexa, uh, Alexa program. And they basically said uh, that they're gonna make an introduction to us, uh, to their fund. So that's, so that's you know, it's this kind of opportunities that these ecosystems um, really, yeah. I, I think accelerate our company because if you stay static in only one place, Mm, you you need to go like you know like pen out or some soon out and see the big picture and that will open you doors in the future. So you just have to believe it's a difficult uh, journey as, yeah, as we all a, mentioned. It's a difficult time and it's a, it's a difficult journey. And as Fernando was saying, uh, we were doing all in one place, but here we we develop the activities and now we are. We launched already uh, our activities in on, online, so that helped us to grow because we can m do more uh, network around the world, and we we can we can have the opportunity to have more clients around the world. So so it's it's a great opportunity for us. Yeah, and uh, talking about those challenges, uh, you guys uh, arrived in Toronto in the middle of a pandemic. We, we were actually you were uh, entering into the first stage of the program that was in March, uh, you know, and then it was first time that you were arriving in Toronto. It was first time that you were actually experiencing everything here and you uh, arrived to be in under a lockdown <laughs> and you needed to change rapidly, uh, you know, everything uh, and adapting to the new situation in order to grow your company here. Um, what are challenges do you think that you can share uh, to the audience uh, by you know, bringing companies here? What, what has been the main challenges that you have seen so far in the market? A lot. <laughs> well, I would say one that basically, yes, we talk nowadays that everything has to be online mm -hmm. and, and that's the reality, but the reality is that the target, our target market is not used to do that reality as well. So there is a lot of challenges that you have to basically understand this new market as in the way that they are also trying to understand themselves. Meaning that, for example, uh, these kind of meetings, for example, now this is happening often, often, but people, you know, like get tired as well. So you need to, to find other ways to keep engaging this uh, customers that are just trying to understand a new world. So you have to deal not just with the reality that is your own environment, your company, all the challenges that you have, for example, you don't know, you don't go to an office right now. We, we do like weekly or a couple of, of yeah, times because, because of the, of the COVID, but still you need to, to, you know, like it's not the same to work every day in the same place where you live. So you need to, to change your mind. And that's, that's something that you need to build up resilience but also to be patient with your potential customers because they are in their process as well so so you need to keep you know like both paces um hope for the best i think that's one of the challenges i don't know yeah Can I complement, Miriam? of course yeah, beatrice I, I was going to uh, start talking <laughs> with you guys <laughs> about those challenges because certainly each company has a different story about that but yes beatrice go ahead I think uh, one thing that's very important for all companies that want to expand to a new market, in, independent which market it is, but in this case, we're talking about Toronto and Canada. I think you really have to be um, open to how people do uh, the work here because we come with a mindset from our countries that a uh, specific ABC is going to work. It does in your country. When you come here, it's very important to be coachable. So you have to, you, you're not in an accelerating program just because, you know, because it's fun or because you, you want to new, meet, new, meet new people. It's not just that. You have to, you, you're applying for it. You're paying for that program. You're doing that in order to get actual feedback of the actual market. 
So we have to be coachable in order to have success. And I think that's one of the companies we, I mean, that's what uh, LATAM is also strongly showing all the other accelerators that we've been part of as well. It's, um, it's a very important um, strong point that you have to keep in mind. You know, if you want to have success, you have to be coachable for it too. Yeah, no, thank you for uh, uh, bringing it up because we, we try to talk with the uh, uh, Genetic co-founders about this. And we understand everyone has experience in their own market about, you know, how to grow their companies in their own market. But certainly in here, you have to hear mentors and you have to hear people around to help you to navigate these challenges because it's, it's not easy. So, uh, Rodrigo, you have been here for over two years. I imagine, you know, going back and forth, back and forth to your country, you know, managing the other company uh that you know perhaps uh, you all can share a little bit of that challenge too that is managing two companies <laughs> is very is it's not an easy process uh what are the challenges that you uh, feel like uh, you can share with the audience uh, in regards of growing the company in general yes because uh bia says something really nice because uh, in brazil everybody knows rank my IP, but in canada we are nobody so you need to 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 do everything in the scratch so in my case, we have the platform and, uh, we, and we have a um, customer success, like a, a, service, a service layer in our product as well. So we have a service and, uh, and a platform as well. In Brazil, works really well. Uh, in North America, it doesn't work because you need to, to have more platform than service. So we need to adapt our product to, to enter in, in North America, in Canada, in the US. So, uh, that's the the main challenge we need to do because uh, every we have a lot of parts that we have the customer service that we have the the customer support we have uh, the service layer so we need to do everything in our tool now to enter in, in this market so it's really it's really different for us. <laughs> that's certainly very different. And I have a question here from uh, Nicholas about. What are the eligibility requirements to apply and uh, be selected into the startup visa program? Uh, so you guys have kind of go through these requirements. What do you can say about the requirements? Like I, I will just introduce that for us, you know, a, every incubator that is a designated incubator has their own structure and requirements for us is to pass through validation, which is bootcamp and then soft landing program, and then uh, pitch the board of directors, which is um, kind of uh, something for most of the companies. But uh, I, Beatriz, maybe I can start with you. What do you think, what, what it requires uh, for a company to actually enter to, uh, to the program? Well, you have to have, uh, first of all, you have to uh, be really, uh, you know exactly what you're doing. You have to be have an actual business. You have to be um, connected not only with, uh, in our case, it was really good. We had other connections also with uh, other um, accelerators that also help us. So you have to network. You have to show that your business has traction. You have to show potential that your business is going to grow. You have to show that you have the market. So it's not just building, uh, you know, any business plan to, to, convinced you have to as Miriam says there's the boot camp and then after the boot camp you go to the soft landing after the soft landing you see if you're eligible for it not only with the requirements as the funds as you know actual having a valid and uh, an, an interesting business um, model you have to show and convince the board that you have business and that you have market and that you're going to make money because uh, that's really important so that's uh, I think it's one thing that people have to keep in mind and it's it, the entrepreneurial life, if I don't know uh, the, the people here, if there have been that for the whole life, but it's a constant, you know, you, you give up working 40 hours for another company to work a hundred hours for yourself. So it's, it's challenging. You have to go, but it's worth every step of it. So that's my point of view. I think it's worth. So thank, thank you, Beatriz. Uh, now, Rodrigo, you were, uh, you know, a company that was already accelerating themselves two years here. Uh, what it makes sense for you at that time to enter into a process that will be uh, validating market and soft landing? Like why, why a company of your size will do all that process from, uh, from a scratch? Yes, uh, as I told you, uh, it's because 
in Canada, we are nobody, so we need to, uh, a lot of network. So Latam, Latam Startup provide this for us. So uh, I think he, when you choose this path, was because the network and, and also uh, learn it faster than learn by ourselves. So uh, Latam has a lot of uh, a lot of mentors, good mentors. So we can uh, the, the first program when I did the first program of Latam was really nice because I learned a lot of things that I didn't know when I try to expand to us so uh that's that was really valuable for 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 us so that's i think that's the main reason <laughs> okay thank you rodrigo uh now juliana fernando uh do you guys enter into the two first uh, stages and then you have to pitch the board of directors how was was what does the experience for you guys uh you know presenting the results of your company after three months working with us <laughs> well I have to say that first of all, you have to have a lot of patience and you have to be resilient. That's the trick to, to this process. Um, oh well. Uh, yeah, complementary, for example, specifically for that. It might sound a bit cliche, but you don't focus on the, I don't know what it's the same, but we were not focused like on getting in the startup visa. We were more focused on getting the product uh, done. So when it comes to the, uh, you know, like the, 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 that we have to do this important pitch, yes, we were scared. But in the end, like we were not expecting any like outcome in particular, whether it was a yes or no, it was not decisive for, for our company. So I think that was the, the criteria, like in our minds to have that mindset where uh, regardless what happened in the end, uh, we will keep going uh, because, uh, yeah, I mean, there, there are many, many ways to uh, launch a product in, in North America, but definitely the startup visa is, is, is one of the, of the best options. So you just have to trust that, that the things will work out and, and work hard for them. It's, it's not like you just pay and sit down and wait that happens. No, you have to make, you know, like all the you have to pass all the checks, like you have to go and introduce yourself with, with other people and get those connections that ultimately is not to get into the startup visa program, but is to basically um, launch your company successfully. Yeah, and I have to say that, you know, for us, uh, the startup visa program is a tool that helps us to keep the companies here, keep the co-founders here since they need to grow their companies, uh, but it's not the ultimate goal. Uh, you know, we are not immigration officers or immigration lawyers, so we are not here to give visas away. We are here to help companies to grow. We are trying our best to do that. And as we are international community, we are very, we care a lot about, you know, helping those international, international co-founders because, you know, we know how difficult it is to grow a company being a newcomer in Canada. And we know that it's, it's heavy on newcomers to be in the country and not be stable because you don't have a permanent residence or because you are not like, you know, in a legal spectrum to, to work uh, a company. So this is something that we want to take away from the shoulders of, uh, you know, entrepreneurs. And that's why we become a part of the Stara Visa. But many times we get the question, you know, about, uh, you know, uh, what do you want to see? And it's not what we want to see, it's what you guys have to want to bring to Canada and if, what, if it makes sense, because sometimes it doesn't. Uh, so there are people, uh, somebody here that is asking about financial projections. My goodness, this is something that we always work at the program. <laughs> uh, and, um, uh, you know, uh, many people get this question around, you know, how we protect our, uh, you know, ourselves. This is the first time we are kind of entering into the market. How we actually do that? Like, it kind of, so somebody can answer maybe that question. Well, um, first of all, we, at least we, in our case, we had, uh, we were very blessed of having a consultant for eCreate that was helping us with that. Um, numbers is not my strong point, but uh, so that's why we have to count with um, additional help, mentorship. We also had people from LATAM startups, you know, uh, take a look at our financial projections. They have amazing mentors there as well. 
So you, you do have to come, you have, the, the math has to, you know, close. You have to have a number that's going to have success because that's how you measure a, a outcome of a business. It's going to be good or not. So depending on what that takes, then you have to put it in a, you know, in a spreadsheet and show it there. You're going to be doing some adaptations regarding pricing, regarding the business. You, you are going to work through it, uh, through the spreadsheet. So you, you have to be, again, uh, open to be coachable, to hearing the feedback, to hearing the realities for the mentors, not only for Latem startups or whatever other accelerator you, you end up um, going through. But um, you have to have a starting point, definitely. And we, we counted with a very good uh, consultant in, in Brazil, and that ended up being our first angel investor. So who not better than our financial consultant to be investing in our business? So he knows it's working, so it's going to work. And that's so. amazing. We always want mentors to become investors in some point. That's, exactly. that's a, a really good way. Uh, Rodrigo, um, how did you project sales when we are in the middle of a pandemic? <laughs> Can you... I, I think you you went through this uh, kind of with certain verticals in your field. Uh, how did you guys did it? Yes, uh, in Brazil was really was really complicated because uh, the pandemic in Brazil starts started in March, so we had a lot of churn, a lot of the cancellation, a lot of the was a chaos. Uh, and nobody wants to to buy anything in in this in this middle. So our growth was really really, really bad until until May. After May, the everything is is going up again. Uh, but now it's really good. It's going up really really good. Uh, but in Canada, it's really hard to to try to to build something because we in Brazil we know. Uh, how many calls we need to to get a sales? Like, ah, if I did some uh, X calls, I I will get a, a Y sales. I don't know. But in Canada, everything is new, so we need to to, to test uh, a lot of things. Uh, in Brazil, we we did this since 2015, so now we need to do the same thing in in Canada. is 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 really really different. Yeah, I agree with that. It's very different. So, uh, Juliana Fernando, uh, you also came here trying to project how you are going to sell Kini. And that uh, you are now producing, you know, as far as I know, in your kitchen, in your apartment, several Kinis. <laughs> so, having like uh, two or three uh, 3D printing uh, and then, uh, you know, trying to promote as well what you guys are doing. How do you project that, you know, in sales for, for, uh, for this year and for the next year? Well, for our case, uh, we use social networks that help us a lot because through that, we made a lot of surveys. Uh, so we can find out some, some 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 answers about our our, our clients and we also and the, the other thing that that we do or that we actually did is we bought a book that helped us to understand all the financial all the financial things here in Canada. So Fernando can uh, tell you more yeah, about yeah. that. Yeah, because when you talk about I mean normally you're breaking up Fernando. You Sorry. might tend to think that it's about the, the sales only, but the reality, for example, I'm not an expert in accounting and I'm not intend to be, but I think it's very important. And that's why, as you know, and say, uh, we recommend this book called Bookkeeping for Canadians. Canadians. The dummy. It's not an advertisement by that. We never buy this kind of dummy books, but it's really good <laughs> because, yeah. trust me, you need to. Uh, have the bigger picture is not only how how much sales I project, it's how much people I project, for example, to hire, and understand the bookkeeping or keeping to understand basically all what is involved in the payroll. So you can project actually how many people can you hire oh, yeah. in the future. Mm -hmm. And also, there is a lot of funding here that you could apply once you incorporate your company. Uh, if you gather the requirements, you can basically hire. Uh, some payroll that it can be, you know, have some funding or grants from the government. And also important is to evaluate or basically project your intangible assets, which you 
sometimes you I mean I, I used to forget that and not think much about it but for example in, in a patent or copyright those are assets that you know like in a startup world it has a lot of value in the end if, if you can have an industrial design patent that, that's really good because that, that's basically how you can um, yeah not just and, and also to basically make a, a better valuation of your company uh, from the beginning so there is a lot of things and I think that the reality is just either to have a, a really good consultant or you do the work and, and read a lot or about finance in all sense and the research the market research that you're running. of course uh, so guys I'm going to go to the last question and then uh, for the audience, if you have any questions, uh, this is time to, for you to put it in the chat or you can wait until I finish my questions, my last question here, and then you can open your mic and then ask questions to uh, Beatriz, uh, Rodrigo, or Fernando and Juliana. So the last question is basically, what are your biggest takeaway, uh, you know, uh, from uh, this experience to bring your company here, being a part of, uh, you know, Stata Visa? all that uh, certainly this year has been very complicated with the COVID-19 and, and everything, but what, what will be that biggest takeaway? Well, uh, for me, definitely uh, always learning to do business in a new country, in a new um, ecosystem is amazing. You know, um, knowledge is something that people can never take away from you. And, um, but definitely I think, um, meeting so many amazing people having contact with so many you know different and uh being able to connect in a different ecosystem a different network uh it's it's such a i know this year has been different a little bit but it's been an amazing process for us you know uh to learn how to um explore your business and go to full capacity of what you can do of your you know, goals and dreams and see it actually happen with, a, you know, Canadian government has lots of uh, benefits as well for, for the companies. I mean, there's lots of things that you, as uh, um, Fernando was saying, there are so many uh, grants available, things that you can actually, uh, incentives, not, not only uh, grants, but incentives for your business. So it's, it's all valid. Everything is amazing, you know, but definitely networking. The people that I've met has been the most rewarding um, experience of all, indeed. Perfect. Uh, so, Rodrigo, what what is your biggest takeaway from the whole experience uh, so far? Because uh, you guys will stay for years and years doing this, but <laughs> at this point, pandemic twenty twenty. <laughs> yes. Uh, this year, I learned a, a lot of things, um, especially in Canada, because uh, Canada is. Is really different my that than my country. My country uh, Canada help helps you uh, your your business to grow. Like they they have a lot of grants and they has uh, they have a lot of benefits. They really help your company to grow. In my country is really different than this. We need to fight against you the the, the the whole country. So I think I learned a lot of things this year with you guys with like Latin special. The connection that you provide like the, the mentors and the the guy from yesterday was really good <laughs> the the mentor that that guy is amazing <laughs> uh so i i think he lear i learned a lot of things and that's that's the for me is the best thing um for you julian and fernando what is your biggest takeaway so far uh for this experience for you i think i've been same as the other uh, startups, is a roller coaster, but uh, this year is especially, uh, you know, a different roller coaster. <laughs> so, what is yeah. your biggest takeaway? Yeah, 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 as I told you, as I mentioned, patience is the biggest for me. I was, uh, before I wasn't like patient, uh, but now I think I, 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 I the mother of a patience. <laughs> well, I, 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 I don't know if I have to say that, but I cry a lot. This this year has been very hard for me, but actually it has been um, very good actually because I met uh, really good people and I learned a lot of things about life and and business too. So it has been a great year for me. 
Excellent. And uh, thank you so much for sharing that because people sometimes don't understand how difficult it is actually to do all this. It is not an easy process for anyone, uh, you know, uh, with pandemic, without pandemic, it's always a challenge out there. And it's important that you rely in, in, you know, in people around you that can help you and that actually believe in your business and you know, that, that can go with you in this journey. Um, so I have a question here from Nicolas. Nicolas, because this is a question about uh, you know, the program per se, I will say right now we have open applications until uh, next Sunday. So just uh, send an application and we take a look for sure uh, of what do you guys have and we will have a uh, feedback for you guys. But in the meantime, here, uh, you know, uh, from the public, I, I don't know, somebody that is uh, looking at the webinar may have any questions for, uh, uh, you know, Beatriz or uh, um, Rodrigo or uh, Fernando and Juliana. You can be uh, opening your microphone and just ask the question. So uh, any questions so far from the public? I see them very quiet. Normally they are not as quiet when, uh, when I receive the emails, <laughs> but anyway. Uh, so guys, one thing, last question really, and then we can finalize the, uh, the webinar if nobody else has questions. Uh, but the one question that I want to ask uh, in regards of uh, you know, the future of the company, what is that, how do you visualize your company in 2021 so far, uh, you know, after all this? Beatriz, yeah. There. Um, well, we are very excited for this next year. Uh, we visualize ourselves already because we're doing running our beta launch now. So we visualize our commercial launch also happening. Um, hopefully already moving to other languages of our solution. So not only in English, but we're going to be probably in Portuguese and maybe Spanish as well. So uh, we're excited for it. We're very optimistic, not only with the whole scenario of the world, but you know, with our company as well. We have to, we have to be positive. We have to be optimistic. I think it's the key to success always. So, thank you, Beatriz. Um, so, before I continue with Rodrigo and Fernando, I think Ana Rivera has a question. Ana, uh, can you open your microphone and ask your question? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. No problem. So at this point, it is clear to me that uh, you get to try to reach out whatever uh, accelerator incubator program available in Canada. I would like to know how did you manage to pick the, the right one for you? Because I know there are so many in Canada. And if would you uh, consider to apply to more than one at the same time? Thank you. I can answer that. <laughs> uh, I'm in three, actually, Anna. Um, I started with LATAM, and throughout the process with LATAM startups, which is, I think it's a very uh, important first step for anyone that is intending to come here, not only because Miriam's is right in front of me, it's not, not that um, at all. It's just because I actually, I'm, I'm, it, was, it was LATAM that gave us uh, from Light Touch and Ecreate the the um, instruments and everything we needed in order to go forward to the other ones. So I'm also an accelerator center. And luckily, I think also because of the job that we did in Latem Startups, it opens many doors. So, and then we also um, are an accelerator center uh, and also CFC, which is Canadian Film Center. We are in a program there for a women company. So I think uh, all of them have uh, strong points. And they all add in different um, uh, aspects of your business. So you can just read more into it. Um, I'm happy to share my experience in each of, each of them if you're willing to, I'd be happy to. But definitely uh, starting off with LATAM for us was very important to open the doors for the other two, so. Thank you, Beatriz. And yes, totally. Uh, you know, we always recommend to be in uh, um, like more than one. <laughs> Uh, more than one accelerator in Kuwait, Rodrigo. Thank you for the comment and the mayor of Toronto. Thank you, the mayor. But that is true. Miriam is very well connected here. She knows everybody. She knows everybody. <laughs> okay. Uh, so guys, but yeah, 
what I, what I wanted to say is that you should be, uh, you know, uh, be a part of different uh, programs because we all complement each other with different type of, uh, you know, support and tools. Uh, so, Rodrigo, what, what is next for you, for next year, for you guys? What, what is that you guys uh, have a plan? I was I was in the middle of uh, of the me the meeting to doing this the the planning for 2021, uh, but but so far we uh, we launched uh, a new product um, before the pandemic. So this product uh, grows a lot because the pandemic because uh, um, so we are we are we are going to put more in force in this product now. And then we are trying to to expand this product to Canada as well. So that's the before, bef but the, that's the plan for for now <laughs> because we are doing the planning yet. Okay, no, that's good. Uh, so, um, Juliana and Fernando, what is what are your plans uh, for twenty twenty one? Yeah, we are really excited because we already sent our first proposal. Uh, which we are expecting to sell 500 robots uh, to educational or to educational organization, which is based in in Calgary. So we are waiting for their answer, and we are hoping to 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 make our first big sale. So we are expecting, and we are really we are really happy for that. And that's really exciting. Yeah. Here <laughs> is Johanna. No, I was saying that uh, apart from that, um, we are basically focusing on selling online. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, we have been investing um, on Google Ads as well, which mm -hmm. will drive sales basically towards our um, uh, sorry, our online store. So that's mm -hmm. uh, another way we we we're gonna sell this year. So either way, it's going to be a B two B sell or B two C clients, and that's that's very exciting. No, that, that certainly is super excited. Uh, so guys, I would like to thank you for being here today in the webinar. And uh, you know about the question about the uh, explain the steps for the Startup Visa program. Uh, I will encourage you to go to the website and uh, you know read there what are the steps because uh, we have said it too many times in too many other webinars and I kind of uh, you know already said it at the beginning of the this webinar as well. Uh, but uh, you know you guys uh, are very welcome to ask more questions and to connect with uh, Beatriz, Rodrigo, uh, Julian, and Fernando through LinkedIn and through other networks. They certainly, uh, you know, are an example and really inspiring stories uh, for every entrepreneur we have in, in our community. So we hope that you, you guys can learn more about their companies as well. Thank you so much for joining us today. And we hope to see you in, in our next session that I believe is going to be, uh, you know, December 1st, right, Gabby? I think so. Uh, it's on our website in any case if somebody uh, wants to become a part of that. Thank you for being here today and we'll see you later. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you Miriam. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Miriam. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Have a great day.